see myself a little bit as a mentor to the younger class. We argue about stuff, but that's how friendships work. So he also, he's really good on this mock draft draft stuff. So he, he lives for this stuff. And I, too, have an affinity for things that haven't happened yet and just trying to will them into existence. I love mock drafts. And I've said this before. Every sports talk radio host in America loves something that you can't really talk about on the air. <laughs> like you just yes. love hockey mm-hmm. and you just can't talk about it. Or grassroots Joy, basketball. <laughs> Joy likes grassroots basketball. <laughs> it's not a lead very often. But that's why she she's pretty good on these predictions on who's going to make it, who's not. That's what she loves. I love mock drafts because I like college football recruiting, but I can't talk. People are always like, you love it so much. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not a good topic for my show, right? Except for draft time. Except for draft time. So let's bring in Joel Klatt, the voice of college football at our network. He's very, very eager to show us yes. his talent. So mock drafts are a lot of guys. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Hi, Joy. Hi. Now, you live down in that rogue county, Orange County. Yes. So you don't have to wear a mask while you sleep. Uh, so welcome <laughs> you sleep? So welcome up to or- to Los Angeles I County. Oh, wow. So it's a little crazier it's up a little, here. A little different up here. So we're going to do, we got some sound effects. Uh, Ryan, oh, this is going to be so good. Ryan, do you got some, uh, drop some uh, draft sound effects here, Ryan. We just want to make the audience. Like when Colin does something silly at number one. And also, or do you three. have some crowd noise in the back? So the rumble, because there's always a crowd. I've been to Boo. So we're going to try this a really big, that's a little crowd? loud. Who's, who's the crowd booing? Well, they're not. The Jets, clearly. Okay. Well, they better not be booing me. I'm the one reading it, generally. That's, oh, that's the, a, that's that's the commissioner. Point. All right. So are you reading the uh, – so we're going to go I am. 1 through 16. We do half the first round. Okay. It's about 12 minutes long. I did it before. Daniel Jeremiah. Who, oh, he's so good, by He the way. limped out of this. He was <laughs> swollen after the beating he took from me, <laughs> dominating him. All right. So I get the first pick. Oh, okay, great. Yes. The show's not called The Clap. No, the, I, I understand that. And whoever finishes last usually gets the first pick, so go ahead. <laughs> so go ahead. All right. The Jaguars. Okay. Let's go. All right, here we go. So that's an easy one. That's the easiest pick I'll make. I agree. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. I don't love big school quarterbacks going in the NFL. I like my guys to get beat up a little in college. Um, I just think he is, since Andrew Luck, he's the – He's the lock at quarterback. Big games, Alabama's, Ohio State's. He can move. Mm-hmm. A lot of Justin Herbert. He can move. He's smart. He's, you know, you can tell. He's got some innate leadership qualities yeah, to I him. I agree. I really like him. And I liked him two or three years ago. And I, I just, he's gotten better every year. He's, I just think he checks all the boxes for me. So I'm going to go Trevor Lawrence. Urban Meyer gets his guy. All right. At number two, the New York Jets are selecting Joel. Uh, I, I'm actually with Colin on this. I like Sam Darnold a lot. I have since college. I think that the Jets actually stick with Sam Darnold. So I'm going to go with Pinay Sewell. Okay. Pinay Sewell, the offensive tackle from Oregon, wow. is my pick. This guy has a, extreme upside, right? I mean, his athleticism is off the charts. His feet are off the charts. He's very smart. He's young. He's probably still a little underdeveloped, which is why he's not going to flash as the most polished uh, offensive pass blocker. But he is a physical freak, and I think that the Jets give Darnold a little bit of help. Robert Saleh looks at that offensive line and says, you know what, we can build something, and I take Penny Sewell, number two, from Oregon. All right, number three, the Miami Dolphins are selecting, Colin. Okay. Trey Lance. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. whoa. The first whoa. Oh, I think he's special. Okay. Um, you big, got that strong. off of his 300 passing attempts in college? By the way, uh, I'm not going to lie. He was at my house uh, 24 hours ago. Oh, Ooh. name drop. Uh, I love your name. Very so good. humble. Very gracious. He's got all the right things in life that he cares about. Everything that you're not. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. I like to hang around people that fill in the blanks for me. I wow, think, that's, a, I, that's listen, an interesting okay, one. I'm not I don't get, agree with that one at all. Oh, oh, time out. I'm not getting trapped with Tua. Because so, you take, so you take an inexperienced guy? No. Do you know in his one season as a starter, Trey Lance threw 18 passes per game? That's like nothing. That's like nothing. He's very inexperienced. I'm not saying he's – listen, I love Trey Lance's I skill set. I get it. I get it. I don't need to start him for the first year. Okay. But I'm not getting trapped with Tua. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Number four, the Atlanta Falcons. I, are th- I feel like this is a gift. This is a gift. Joel. The Falcons take Justin Fields, and he goes back home to Georgia to back up Matt Ryan as Matt Ryan plays out maybe the last couple of years, at least in a Falcons uniform. And Justin Fields, who needs a little development in particular because he can hold the ball too long at times. But remember, he's been the best player on the field in virtually every single game that he's played. He's hyper accurate with the ball down the field. He's an incredible athlete. And that leadership that you talked about with Trevor Lawrence, he has it in spades as well. Remember, one of the only reasons the Big Ten played football was because of Justin Fields and his leadership. I like the Falcons to take Justin Fields. I I totally disagree. Can he tackle? Because the team can't. They don't have any. They can't tackle. This is a terrible defense. Boy, you and I disagree with that. Yeah, uh, Matt, yeah, we do. He's got Matt Ryan as a 75-year-old man. Matt's 35. Just wait till Arthur Smith makes Matt the MVP. All right, what do we got? <laughs> All Bengals? right, number five, Bengals. Colin. Um, Matt's gonna text me. By the way, he's like, "Really? You're drafting a quarterback? Go ahead." I don't have these relationships you do. I just... Oh, Trey Lance was at my house. Very humble. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take Rashawn Slater, Northwestern. He is what Joe Burrow's got Jonah Williams. So now you can bring a kid in that can play guard. He can play tackle. He matched that with Chase Young. This is somebody I didn't, I, if you had asked me six months ago, I didn't know much. And a bunch of smart people said, hey, you like this mock draft? Go check this guy out. First of all, he's had really hard coaching at Northwestern. Yep. It's a really smart, they, they lay it on their players. They make their players figure out stuff. Heady kid matched up against Chase Young. You can play him in or out. And to me, this league's about find a quarterback and then protect him. Yeah. It's what the Colts never did for Andrew Luck. Rashawn, what do you think about I, that pick? You know what? I actually like that. And he and he is my second tackle on the board. I, I like that a lot. I love, I love Slater yeah. as a pick. I think really high floor you, for you Slater. Had, for, by the way, you Slater. had games. You saw him play. I saw him play, and, and I know I was bummed that he wasn't on the field last year. He and Sewell both opted out, but uh, Slater's a great player. Oh, you guys agree on that one. That's nice. Philadelphia Eagles, Joel, number six. Um, I, they've got to make a decision on Hurts long term, and I, I love Jalen as as a player. I just don't buy it long long term for him. So, and and the way that this has played out, Zach Wilson is sitting there from BYU. Oh so God. Zach Wilson goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. This guy is 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 kind of a. He's, he's a better version of Baker Mayfield and Carson Wentz all rolled up into one because he's got more arm talent, right? He can throw off platform. He can drop down. This guy plays the position of quarterback like a shortstop. So you're not afforded the opportunity to repeat your delivery. This is what some of these quarterbacks have wrong. You can't just sit there and be a statue. He's off platform and can drive the football down the field, makes wild plays all the time. You can be concerned about his level of competition, and I get that, but Zach Wilson, I think, is going to be a, a really good starter in the NFL. The Detroit Lions calling at number seven. Okay. So this now, so much of me wants to take Micah Parsons, who ran a 4-3 yesterday. This defense is awful. They gave up the most yards. They gave up the most points. Detroit's awful defensively. But Kyle Pitts for Florida, Jared Goff, just lost Kenny Galladay. Mm. You can't give Jared Goff. You can't go from McVay to Dan Campbell Mm -hmm. and then have no skill people. Kyle Pitts will be a 75-80 catch guy. You can put him out wide. You can put him at tight end. Hell, you can put him anywhere. Many people think he's – I just – I think he's a star, and I think Jared Goff needs help because I think he's downgrading a coach, downgrading an offensive line, and Kenny Galladay just walked out to the Giants. So I'm taking Kyle Pitts. I I would much prefer to go defense – but I, I got no. I can't have golf fail. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought you were going to go defense. There. I was. I uh, was. That, that's that's interesting. And I, I, now I'm. Oh gosh. Uh, oh, Joel, is he getting you? Because well, you you're on every, the clock. You got number every, eight Panthers. You, who you got? You got all these teams that have quarterbacks taken them. You're running out. I know. Well, that's the thing is is I wanted. I didn't think all the QBs would be all of well, my you top took QBs. I, well, I understand that, but. I didn't think you were going to – to be honest, I didn't think you were going to take Trey Lance to that. I had Trey Lance going to the Panthers here at eight. I, you totally overdrafted him at three. <laughs> I'm thrown for a loop right now. Um, I, I'm just going to take best on my board because I think that you're getting a lot of value with Jamar Chase here, yes. the wide receiver from LSU. Yes. And, 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 and the Panthers, yes, they need a long-term answer – at quarterback, but man, Jamar Chase is unbelievable. You go back a couple of years, he was the best receiver in college football. Oh, he's a man. He is so good as a route runner. He creates space. He's great at the catch point. He's strong. I I, I understand this doesn't like address a ton of needs, although they need out, outside help well, to yeah, take some pressure Curtis, off of McCaffrey. They just they, lost Curtis Samuel. They, they, call, uh, they lost Curtis Samuel. You're exactly right. 
they do need long-term help. Maybe they can get a quarterback later in the draft, but Jamar Chase goes to the Panthers. I actually think it's a great pick. I, you, you lost Curtis Samuel. Okay, look at this. Number Boy. nine, Broncos, Colin. Well, it's really interesting because if I'd have made this, done this mock draft with Clatt, who was chicken about a month ago, but he finally addressed it. <laughs> decided to come. But I would have taken a corner, but they just went and paid for Kyle. They went and paid. For, yeah, they got Kyle Fuller. So, but I, I still think they're bad at corner. So the question, because this is a very, this is my hardest pick because I'm not a Drew Locke fan. Yeah, I know. They need a QB. But I'm not a Mac Jones fan. Yeah. And also, they need a corner, but they addressed it with Kyle Fuller. Right. I also think they could upgrade at tackle, yep. but I don't think it's a necessity. And I do think they need an interior defensive lineman, but mm. none of them to me. I got Bradley Chubb, Von Miller's older. This is a hard pick yeah. for me. You know, and they don't need wide receiver. So you I would love to trade out. We're not trading right now, but no. you'd love to trade okay, out. Okay, right so now. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double down on corner. I'm going to go Caleb Farley, Virginia okay. Tech. Okay, that's so, not that's not terrible. No, it's it, listen, they got a bunch of stuff, and I think Vic Fangio is a very good defensive coach. Listen, they're in a division with Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, and Derek Carr. That's exactly right. You got to have corners. Well, and, and specifically Mahomes and, and Herbert. You got to cover down the field for a long time. You know, so they got they need guys that can cover. I'm I'm you know what I like that. All I right. hate that I like some of these picks that you're giving right now. <laughs> Number ten, Dallas Cowboys, Joe. Well, uh, oh, the, yeah, boy. the Cowboys need some help. They're not gonna be happy that you just uh grab Caleb Farley. I'm gonna go with Patrick Sertain. Yep. Uh from Alabama the corner. They need help on the outside. Listen, the Cowboys tied for the most 25-yard passing touchdowns given up in the league last last year. They have got to have guys that can cover. This guy, I think, is is the best cover corner uh, in the draft. You can put him anywhere in the slot on the outside. He's big. He's physical. You just saw him run a couple of days ago. He can he can, you know, blow it out in terms of a timed 40. Patrick Sutan goes to the Cowboys. Boy, this is getting tough now because the I Giants know. just acquired. I would have said Giants need a wide receiver, but they just went out and paid for Kenny Galladay, and they already have Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard. And then they got Kyle Rudolph and Evan Ingram. So they don't need a tight end and they don't need a wide receiver. So this mock draft that I would have, that I did a month ago, I addressed all those, but they solved those. They games. did. This is how it happens real time. Uh, Who are you right? shaking, Colin, so, with the Giants? I'm going to go offensive line. I got to protect Daniel Jones. I'm going to go. Uh, you know what? I like the viability of um, Elijah Vera Tucker. Yeah, I USC. Like that. They can go inside or out. He's a better guard than a tackle, but he had a great year. The bottom line is they are stacked at tight end. They addressed wide receiver. They even got a backup for Saquon Barkley. And their defense is not the issue. Their defensive front's fine. And they went and paid for Dory Jackson. So they went and addressed corners. So if you start looking at what they need, it's in, it's an offensive lineman like, like the kid from Northwestern that you can move in or out. And Vera Tucker had a great year at left tackle. Now, the Pac-12 didn't have a ton of great pass rushers. But like you said, he can move inside. Move him inside. Which, which, which is good. And they, they need help protecting. And by the way, now our, our th my three best offensive linemen are off the board. I think those three are, are separating themselves through this process. Yeah. So we've got Sewell off the board, Vera Tucker off the board, and Rashawn Slater off the board. All right, the 49ers, Joel. I think that they, they've got to go out there and, and replace what they're losing at corner, right? And, and at this point... I think that J.C. Horn makes a lot of sense. Good the player. cornerback from, yeah. from South Carolina. My I, scouts love him. Yeah, a, a, a lot of people that I'm talking to within the NFL say that he's quietly really pushing those top yeah. two corners right now, that it's a good draft up there at the top with these three guys that can cover well, and he's got good ball skills, which people love. Uh, the ability to go out there and create turnovers. So I've got the 49ers going with J.C. Horn from South Carolina. By the way, that division's got D.K. Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and the Rams pieces. And now the Well, Cardinals now you're going to have to deal with Stafford. And DeAndre Hopkins. So it's a great wide receiver division. I mean, those, those three teams are stacked at wide receivers. So that's not a bad pick by you at all. The L.A. Chargers at 13, Colin. Well, they address center and guard. I believe they're going to go. I think they're going to stay on the offensive line because Derwin James comes back at safety. Ooh, so. You're overdrafting here. Well, I, you don't even know who I drafted. I, I, I know the offensive lineman in the draft, and you're overdrafting right now. If he's Boy, going offensive a... line, Joy, he's overdrafting. Well, <laughs> go I, ahead. No, no, no. That's fine. Okay. I mean, I've got the next pick, so I'm ecstatic that you're overdrafting. Go ahead. I'm going to take Christian Darrisaw, Virginia Tech, yeah. tackle. Over over overdrafting. He's very big. He looks very strong to me. That's great. They're bad at tackle. What are you going to do? I understand that, but sometimes you just got to go well, where with do you some think, value. Where do you think he should go? At that point, right? Darrisaw, to me, I took is, him at 13. 
not I mean mid 20s I think is is high enough for him and you've got some wide receivers on the board that you can pair up with a young wide uh, uh, quarterback you still got Waddle on the board you still got Devonte Smith on the board well yeah I mean, well, that's interesting the there's like 25 guys yeah, that fine. can all right what, what do you got all right the Vikings Joel uh Vikings have got to update their pass rush right I mean their their edge yeah. on their defense has got a, so I got Quiddy Pay the edge uh, defensive end from Michigan. I think he was used poorly at Michigan because they didn't allow him to just sit at defensive end like the five technique or or a seven technique and just rush the passer and develop. They were using him in stunts too much. That's why his production wasn't quite as uh, what you would want to see. But he is a physical freak, and I think he's the best edge player in the draft. Why? What about all those receivers you were talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, they don't need those receivers. So they they were, I think, believe, last uh, 23 sacks. Uh, fifth worst in the league. They gave up 4,000 passing yards. They've mm. got to get to the quarterback. I don't disagree with their need. I agree with you. New England Patriots, Colin. Well, this is, by oh, the way. Oh, do it. I predicted this. Do it. Before he got out here, I put Jalen Waddle down, and I'm doing it. Wide receiver, Alabama. So okay. they have to, they got Kendrick Bourne, who's a four. Nikhil Harry's a three or a four. Nelson Aguilar's a two. They upgraded tight ends. So I think this is a can't miss. I think this kid is really special. I think he gets overshadowed by Suggs last year and by Devontae Smith because he got banged up a little bit. I think he's a stud. Um, I love Waddle. I, I really do. He's not as good of a route runner as Devontae Smith, and route runners usually have more success at the NFL level than guys that are just, like, physical talents. But I'm, I'm with you. I'm, the, like, like, I'm nitpicking here. Nitpicking, nitpicking, Colin. All right, finally. Oh, so five, who are the Cardinals selecting at? Oh, 16? by the way, all those receivers you talked about you may want to snag one there. I am going to take Devonte Smith right there. Cardinals take Devonte Smith. Ooh. Well, I wanted to take a corner for them because obviously they lost Patrick Peterson, they lost uh, Drake Kirkpatrick. Uh, I wanted to maybe even look at defensive tackle, but I don't think that there's a tackle that you can really value at that point. And if Smith is on the board, you look at his body of work, the separation that he gets. I understand that he's slight, but man. This guy is wide open all the time, and and I love the creativity that Sark used at Alabama because you could say, hey, he's too small to get off the line of scrimmage against physical corners, right? And that might be true, but look how Sark used him. He was constantly in motion. He was off the ball. He was. They used him in such creative ways, and that reminds me of what Cliff could do with him with Arizona. So a creative play caller, a great quarterback with Kyler Murray. I think that Devontae Smith could be in a real explosion player for the Cardinals. All right, so let's look at Joel Klatt and I. So how do we do? How do well, we do? Anybody? Did we leave anybody on the board? You screwed up my board with your Panay Sewell to the Jets, and then I screwed up yours with Trey Lance. Yeah, that one was. Well, that you know, one was can weird. I just expa- explain Trey Lance, who was at my house a couple nights ago? He was. <laughs> so. <laughs> My He's thing very is, humble. I'm claustrophobic. I don't like being trapped. I tell Joy this. I think that's a bad quarterback draft class next year. You get to week eight with Tua, and you got Sean McDermott, defensive coach, and Belichick, defensive you coach, and like... Robert Sala, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm trapped with Tua. I bring Trey Lance in. You don't have to play. But I get to make a decision the following year, so I'm essentially drafting Trey Lance for next year. When he'll easily be the best quarterback prospect next so year. So you want to take the third pick in yeah. this year's draft. Yeah. For the chance that it could be next year's pick. You got Justin Fields at four, and he's not going to take a snap for two years. Well, maybe, maybe not. I, know, I mean, the Falcons are trying to get out of that contract with Matt Ryan. So they, who knows if they can move him or not? It's good luck. Oh, I understand. I mean, that's a big. <laughs> that's a, a lot of dead cap big, money. That's a big number and, and, and good for, for Matt in that sense. I got to be honest. I feel like I stole Kyle Pitts. God, Goff got lucky. Poor kid goes to Detroit from L.A. But you see how it happens, though. This is I, this is why I love doing these type of – because every year we were like, how did that guy fall? And it's like, because it happens, right? Because team needs Trump best available. Uh, fit Trump's best available. All of these things are, are interesting. And one of the things that I keep coming back to when I'm doing this, when I'm ranking players, when I'm looking at team, team needs and everything, I, it's, yes, it has to do with fit. Colin, don't you even think it, it more so has to do with the organization's intent? You know, like they a plan. What's the blueprint for this player that you're drafting? I think too many times we see organizations and they're just like, all right, we took this guy and and we'll see. You know, like like, like Isaiah like, Wilson. You know, they're like, hey, you know, here, the Titans are like, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll listen, see. I'll and it you, didn't turn out. Every year somebody drops in the draft. Micah Parsons, who's a great player. Yes, he is. But if you start looking at what, like, I would have taken Micah Parsons at seven with Detroit. That was the, I had it written down. 
But in the end, Kyle Pitts fell, and I think— And he's sitting there. And and Goff just lost Galladay. You can't have Goff behind a bad O-line without a star. So I would have taken Micah Parsons at seven because their defense is abysmal. But Kyle Pitts is going to win you more games than Micah Parsons. Probably. So that's that. So and by the way, and then you get to Carolina, and the truth is you lost Curtis Samuel. So I actually love the Jamar Chase pick. Because if he's there. By the way, had they not traded Curtis Samuel, I would go with Micah Parsons. Right. No, I I I totally agree. This is why free agency has to play out. I I love this exercise. It's very fun. I mean, who knows if any of those will be correct? But that was that was fun. That was a good exercise right there. Hey, you come on the show. It's not paddle ball here. Oh, it's UFC. Very it's humble. Octagon. This is octagon you stuff. Can take some shots in here. You know, I. A lot of these shows are Cream Puff City. Not this. Not show. this one. This, Ask they... Trey Lance. He was at Collins' <laughs> house two nights ago. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Joel Klatt. Excellent effort by Joel Klatt. Excellent. Appreciate it, sir. Appreciate Very it. Very excellent effort. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.